you amazing hackers hope you are doing well today uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about dumb cross-site scripting now this is a video I've wanted to make for a long time because I really wanted to know how dumb cross-site scripting worked for myself so I took the time to do a little bit of research well actually a couple of hours uh, and I uh, came back with a few like a summary for you guys so uh, let's dive right in shall we the first thing I want to answer is what actually are we talking about when we're talking about dumb cross-site scripting. So uh, first of all what you need to know is that a website is made up of DOM. It's a document object model. It has properties and it describes your website and it has properties such as URL, paths, history. And an attacker can manipulate these values. For example if you just manipulate the URL you can already see that you can use a few of these parameters such as document.url to perform these kinds of attacks. So uh, when an attacker manipulates these values, the input is passed from the DOM property the attacker manipulated into a function that can execute JavaScript. This does not need to be displayed on a page per se. Now I wrote this down because it's really important. Uh, mostly when you do stored or reflected cross-site scripting, it always gets reflected back on the page but on the document object model if you do cross-site scripting in one of these attack vectors it doesn't necessarily have to be reflected um, so uh, one example I can give you for is eval you can do any uh, code injection into eval JavaScript code injection into eval and it probably won't show up on your page per se so um, these are a few of the possible functions that are vulnerable to DOM cross-site scripting uh, you've got your sources and your sinks. Now uh, the difference should be pretty obvious if you look at these. Um, but your sinks, they don't, uh, they take uh, user input, uh, and your sources, they take your DOM properties. So um, I have an example for you guys as well, which I'll also be showing you uh, in real life. But I want to keep it simple at first so for example if I have two input fields in my HTML page then I can go to my JavaScript and I can see for example an eval function that gets the values of these input fields so uh, it gets the value of first num and then it'll get the value of second num and it'll add these two up and then evaluate that specific uh, algorithm so when it does that uh, we can insert pretty much any JavaScript we want in there uh, and we can end this if, if of course we don't have sanitation we can insert any JavaScript into our input fields and we can uh, get it executed if we just end our uh, evaluation statement or sorry our get uh, element by ID statement first now uh, you should of course never use eval but as you can see there are other dangerous functions out there such as location.search, location.href, document.url, document.write, element.interview, html. There are a few dangerous functions out there and it's really hard to have all of them uh, under control to realize that none of these can be used to have all of them in your mind at all of the time when programming. Now it's also really hard to find the DOM cross-site scripting manually. That's because, as I, like I said, the value doesn't always have to be reflected on the page. So you will have to do some digging and some searching if you want to do this manually. Or you can just use the Burp Pro Red Vulnerability Scanner, which will also search for these vulnerabilities automatically. I'm also going to be demonstrating you real quick one injection vulnerability that I have. So. Um, what I have here is I went to the site DOM XSS. This is a really good site to learn cross-site scripting, to learn DOM cross-site scripting. So uh, I took the simplest two, um, the simplest two URL, and when I go to this challenge specifically, I can see that my name here. Uh, I have a parameter name here, and in that parameter, I added a cross-site scripting attack vector. Now I also want you guys to, so I'm just going to execute this and as you can see it works. Now I also want you guys to know why this works. So I'm going to open up the script here uh, and as you can see I'm inspecting my element. And when I open the script there is a particular line in here. Document.getElementById user.innerHTML and then it sets the inner HTML without escaping any characters. So as you can see I can insert anything I want in here. 
and it's a dumb cross-site scripting because I'm doing a, a inner HTML and I'm not just getting the value from a database. It's not just the stored value that I'm getting and putting in my HTML page. It's something that I'm actually, I'm actually getting JavaScript here and I'm executing this JavaScript. So um, that's also a possibility for cross-site scripting. Now, um, there are a lot more nuances to this than I can tell in one small video. So uh, I'm going to end it here. If you guys want to know more, I'll put some resources in the description to learn a lot more about this than I can ever tell you. Um, I would like to thank you guys for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next video and I hope you'll have a nice day. Bye.